As they led him away, they seized Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country. They placed the cross on his back and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, among them women who were mourning and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For this is certain, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, the wombs that never bore children, and the breasts that never nursed. Two other criminals were also led away to be executed with him. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, and offered Jesus wine mixed with gall to drink. But after tasting it, he would not drink it. They crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. But Jesus said, Father, Forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. Now when the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and made four shares, one for each soldier, and the tunic remained. Now the tunic was seamless, woven from top to bottom as a single piece. So the soldiers said to one another, Let's not tear it, but throw dice to see who will get it. This took place to fulfill the scripture that says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they threw dice. So the soldiers did these things. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. Pilate also had a notice written and fastened to the cross which read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Thus many of the Jewish residents of Jerusalem read this notice because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city and the notice was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but rather, This man said I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Those who passed by defamed him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You who can destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, even the chief priests, together with the experts in the law, were mocking him among themselves. He saved others, but he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also spoke abusively to him. One of the criminals who was hanging there railed at him saying, Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him saying, Don't you fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we rightly so, for we are getting what we deserve for what we did but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. Now standing beside Jesus' cross were his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. So when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing there, he said to his mother, Woman, look, here is your son. Then he said to his disciple, Look, here is your mother. From that very time the disciple took her into his own home. After this, Jesus, realizing 
that by this time everything was completed, said in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was there. So they put a sponge soaked in sour wine on a branch of hyssop and lifted it to his mouth. Now when it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. Around three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. Then Jesus calling out with a loud voice said, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. And after he said this, he breathed his last. Just then, the temple curtain was torn in two. From top to bottom, the earth shook and the rocks were split apart. The tombs were opened and the bodies of many saints who had died were raised. And they came out of the tombs after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. Now when the centurion who stood in front of him saw how he died, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James the younger, and of Joseph, and Salome. When he was in Galilee, they had followed him and given him support. Many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were there too. Then because it was the day of preparation, so that the bodies should not stay on the crosses on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was an especially important one, the Jewish leaders asked Pilate to have the victim's legs broken and the bodies taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the two men who had been crucified with Jesus, first the one and then the other. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and blood and water flowed out immediately. For these things happened so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Not a bone of his will be broken. And again, another scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. Now when evening had already come, since it was the day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a highly regarded member of the council, who was himself looking forward to the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was surprised that he was already dead. He called the centurion and asked him if he had been dead for some time. When Pilate was informed by the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Nicodemus, the man who had previously come to Jesus at night, accompanied Joseph, carrying a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about 75 pounds. And they took Jesus' body and wrapped it with the aromatic spices in strips of linen cloth according to Jewish burial customs. Now at the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden was a new tomb where no one had yet been buried. And so because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they placed Jesus' body there. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph saw where the body was placed. The women who had accompanied Jesus from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. Then they returned and prepared aromatic spices and perfumes. On the Sabbath, they rested according to the commandment. The next day, which is after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees assembled before Pilate and said, Sir, 
We remember that while that deceiver was still alive, he said, After three days I will rise again. So give orders to secure the tomb until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal his body and say to the people, He has been raised from the dead, and the last deception will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, Take a guard of soldiers, go, and make it as secure as you can. So they went with the soldiers of the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. Suddenly there was a severe earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled away the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were shaken and became like dead men because they were so afraid of him. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought aromatic spices so they might go and anoint him. But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled back. Then as they went into the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples, even Peter, that he is going ahead of you into Galilee. You will see him there, just as he told you. And when they returned from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. But these words seemed like pure nonsense to them and they did not believe them. Then Peter and the other disciple set out to go to the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down and saw the strips of linen cloth lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who had been following him, arrived and went right into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen cloth lying there and the face cloth, which had been around Jesus' head, not lying with strips of linen cloth, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first came in, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that Jesus must rise from the dead. So the disciples went back to their home.